Hello, you are here with me, Dai Chiang, on BTV News, live at 3 p.m. Hanoi time. Welcome to the newscast, and here, check out our headlines. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung attended the groundbreaking ceremony for a $450 million high-tech project on the outskirts of Hanoi. Ho Chi Minh City encourages firms in online tax payment as it helps cut time off the administrative procedure. Recycle, redesign, a class that teaches young children to preserve the cultural identity of ethnic groups and green development in Vietnam. The top story for this bulletin, the 13th National Assembly, a closest month-long ninth session in Hanoi on Friday. The National Assembly fulfilled its scheduled agenda and decided on key national issues. The National Assembly has also fine-tuned a number of regulations for the state and political operators in line with the new constitution in respect to the law-governed state and public democracy. The closing ceremony of the 13th National Assembly's ninth session was broadcast live to the nation under the chairmanship of National Assembly Chairman Nguyen Sinh Hung. Addressing the event, Chairman Nguyen Sinh Hung held National Assembly deputies for their outspoken opinions on shortcomings and forecasts that could hinder development. He also referenced the threat to Vietnam's sovereignty posed by Chinese violations through the construction of the large-scale building work on the Reef Islands in Vietnam's Chung Sa or Spratly Archipelago, threatening peace, stability, maritime and aviation freedom in the East Sea. He also called upon the government, agencies and the entire political system to improve national economic competitiveness and restructuring, extend international integration and firmly safeguard peace and stability. The whole party, people and forces must stay united to overcome challenges and successfully achieve the 2015 socio-economic development goals and the 2011-2015 plan, keeping the country on track for the next development phase. After the ninth session, the legislature adopted a resolution on social insurance payments for workers and another on strengthening measures to prevent wrongful convictions and provide compensation for victims of miscarriages of justice, which received 92.1 percent approval vote. It also stressed the need to undertake the construction of Long Thang International Airport in the southern province of Dong Nai as a major national project. On on the last working day of the session, 92.7 percent of deputies passed a resolution on question and answer sessions. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung attended the groundbreaking ceremony for a $450 million US dollar project. This is to develop infrastructure at the Hoa Lạc High Tech Park on the outskirts of Hanoi on Friday. The project, approved back in 2010, is being funded by Japanese official development of assistance loans. The remaining $50 is provided by the Vietnamese government. The project is expected to be completed in 2018 with all five contract packages scheduled to commence this year. Addressing the ceremony, the government leader thanked the Japanese government for the $27 million in ODA it has provided over the past two decades. These mostly earmarked for socio-economic infrastructure. Japan remains Vietnam's largest ODA provider. Now, good news for foreign investors in Vietnam. On Thursday, Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dung ratified Decree 60 2015 to replace Decree 58, which included regulations on removing limits on foreign ownership in listed companies. The new decree will not only have positive impacts on the development of the security market, but also accelerate the privatization process that the government is determined to hasten efficiently. Under the new decree, foreign stakes can rise up to 100 percent for most sectors, and firms will also be allowed to propose their own limits. The current regulation capped foreign stakes in public companies at 49 percent. An exhibition to introduce Vietnamese products to Korean supermarkets was held in Ho Chi Minh City on June the 24th. 
60 booths with 200 products from 54 Vietnamese firms in agriculture, seafood, textile and garments have been displayed at the exhibition. This program offers a chance for Vietnamese enterprises to introduce their best products to 30 South Korean importers who are key suppliers of Lotte Mart. The exhibition will run until June 28. Currently, South Korea is Vietnam's third largest trading partner and one of its biggest foreign investors. Now, Vietnam's first half gross domestic product or GDP growth reached 6.28 percent, the strongest rise in the past five years, according to the General Office of Statistics. The number of newly registered businesses also increased by 20 percent, while the number of companies ceasing trading slightly dropped. The figures offer positive signs for the economy's recovery. However, some other statistics reflected some challenges that the economy is still facing. Notably, the first half of the year saw a high trade deficit at around $3.7 billion. The figure accounts for 4.8 percent of the total export turnover during the first six months. Now, there are about 140,000 enterprises in Ho Chi Minh City. However, only 15,000 enterprises are paying their taxes online. The Ho Chi Minh City authorities are encouraging more enterprises to register online tax payment. It took the accounting department of this company a long time to finish tax payment procedures using the traditional method. Two months ago, this company switched to paying taxes online. This new method has saved them a lot of time. We only need to input information via our computer, following the instruction of the tax department. It took us only 20 to 30 minutes to complete the whole process. It has to finish the registration on time. 100% of enterprises register online tax payment. However, only 15% of those actually use this method. We are collaborating with banks and enterprises to create a workflow between the three sides. Banks serve as a bridge, helping enterprises to fulfill their obligation. We have connected with 28 commercial banks. 15 banks have implemented their technical platform to transfer the money from enterprises to our online tax payment gateway. One reason that enterprises are still slow to adopt online tax payment is because they are not familiar with this new process. Security and accuracy in payment is also another issue. Online tax payment has two major benefits. It helps cut time off the administrative procedure, and it helps track the data and history of the tax payments of enterprises. For banks, we are implementing solutions for security and customer information protection. Local authorities also collaborate closely with banks and enterprises to implement the online payment system. We will organize different groups to instruct enterprises in completing their online tax payment. We will also organize campaigns to raise more awareness of this new tax payment method, introduce the benefits for enterprises so that they will be more encouraged to switch to the new method. The General Department of Taxation aims to have 90 percent of businesses paying their taxes online by the end of September. With the collaboration of the government, banks and enterprises, Ho Chi Minh City can set a good example for other cities and provinces to follow. In other news, the Ho Chi Minh City Training Center for Energy Management was inaugurated this morning at Hiefuk Industrial Zone in Ho Chi Minh City. The ceremony drew participation from the Municipal Authority, the Ministry of Industry and Trade, the Japan International Cooperation Agency or JICA. 
The project will span a land plot over 900 square meters and is worth over 1.2 million dollars. It is sponsored by a non-refundable ODA by Japan International Cooperation Agency. The center is scheduled to come into operation in 2016. It is expected to provide training for energy management and boost energy consumption efficiency in Ho Chi Minh City and other southern provinces. Now, the European Union delegation in Vietnam awarded prizes to five winners of its climate change competition on Friday in Hanoi. The competition, which took place on Facebook earlier this month, was aimed at encouraging the public, particularly the young, to take action in relation to climate change. The five winners of this year's climate change competition, organized by the EU delegation to Vietnam, each took home a bamboo bike. Besides a deeper understanding about climate change in Vietnam, they turned out winners thanks to their imaginative climate change mitigation solutions. Competition like this help people, especially youngsters, understand more about climate change and more importantly, about its influence, especially when Vietnam is one of the countries that we most severely affected. The changes can be the change of very small habits in daily life, for example, avoiding using plastic bags and classify rubbish at home. The EU is working to cut at least 40 percent of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, and this competition is part of its efforts to raise global awareness about the severe impacts of climate change facing the whole world, including Vietnam. So you have the political agreements, but you also have things that have to be done at a very personal level. Uh, daily habits have to be changed a bit, and uh, that's what we're trying to generate interest about. Some 1,000 entries were submitted on a number of issues relating climate change. The competition is jointly held by the EU delegation and embassies of its member states to promote the United Nations Climate Change Conference held in Paris at the end of this year. In the capital city of Hanoi, the 2015 Vietnamese Family Festival officially kicked off to mark the Vietnam Family Day. Recycle, redesign, a class that teaches young children to preserve the cultural identity of ethnic groups and green development in Vietnam. These and more coming up. Exotic Vietnam is an intriguing blend of many charms. This land is where all manner of stunning landscapes await like a visual feast, rivaled only by the beauty of its people and their abundantly rich tradition and culture. Here is where you can relive the past in richest color or live it up in the bright lights of the big city. With so much more to offer, Vietnam is simply unforgettable. Welcome back to VTV News. Now, the 2015 Vietnamese Family Festival officially kicked off in Hanoi on Friday as part of activities to mark the Vietnam Family Day, which falls on June the 28th. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, this year's event is themed a loving warm family meals. Let's join them. Early in the morning, more than 100 families gathered here to join the cooking competition. This is one of the highlights of this year's Vietnamese Family Festival. What's special about this year's event is that it honors the values of family meals in Vietnamese tradition. In modern society, family meals are given less importance, but they are actually a trait of our culture that we need to preserve. Today, I helped my mom cook some dishes to join the cooking contest. The meal that we prepared is inspired by the fire of the stove. It's a meaningful symbol that connects all members of my family. My dad usually goes home late, so this is a nice activity that we can do together. A highlight of the event is a loving message tree. This is where thoughtful and grateful messages from family members are written on heart-shaped leaves and then hung. 
I have traveled 40 kilometers from Đường Lâm to the center to join the festival. Here at the Loving Tree, I have written a message for my family. I love my little family very much, and I hope we'll always be happy. A photo exhibition showcased 100 photos, capturing moments in daily life of Vietnamese families across the nation. The 2015 Vietnamese Family Festival also includes seminars, art performances and a parade, and we conclude on June the 28th. Now on to other news, 256,000 people in Vietnam are HIV AIDS positive and among these, 22% are drug addicts. These figures were published in a report on drugs and crime released on June the 26th in Hanoi by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime or UNODC. <coughs> Drug trafficking in Vietnam was one of the many issues covered in the World Drug Report 2015. Vietnam is facing challenges in tightening the prevention of drug trafficking. The distribution and sale of substances used to synthesize heroin, such as pseudoephedrine, continues to rise. Geographically, that's not easy because of the nature of the terrain and where some of the um, production areas uh, are located. Uh, your cross-border controls um, is an area that needs to have continued um, and increased attention. Um, and you also have to carry on working carefully with your communities. The number of drug users around the world in 2015 remains high. It is estimated that 246 million people, equivalent to 5% of the world population, use illegal drugs. The number of people getting treatment and rehabilitation remains low. The World Report on Drugs and Crime by UNODC gave us a very clear overview on the route of drug trafficking. It also gave us data about the demand and supply of illegal drugs. It will help Vietnam be more prepared in our prevention of drug trafficking. On a law enforcement, cross-border control uh, side, UNODC will carry on working with our partners in the police, the border guard and customs. Not just UNODC, but others, including the World Health Organization, UNAIDS, will be working with your communities and supporting ministries um, to develop the practices and the policies. To contribute to the World Drug Campaign on June the 26th, Vietnam launched many campaigns to deliver the message drug prevention is not only the responsibility of the government, it must be community-based. And meanwhile, Ho Chi Minh City Authority figures show that the city currently has around 19,000 drug addicts, two-thirds of which are unemployed. In addition, 90% of current addicts are relapsed following rehabilitation. As part of efforts to remedy this situation, local authorities are making greater efforts to tie drug rehabilitation with a better community in a reintegration of four former addicts. This motorcycle workshop is always crowded with customers. Very few people know that its owner used to be a heroin addict and spent a fortune on buying drugs. After a few unsuccessful rehabilitations, Nguyen Van Quang again committed himself to tackling his addiction. This time, he was offered a preferential credit package by local authorities that were on offer to former drug addicts. This promise of a better future seems to have had a huge impact. Thanks to the preferential credit, I can buy spare parts and tools for my job. In addition, I can also buy old motorbikes, refurbish and sell them to make a profit. My life is much more stable now. Most drug addicts are offered vocational courses during their rehabilitation process. However, few find a proper job when returning to their communities. I went through drug rehabilitation, but after treatment, I still couldn't find work. At the time, I was intent on getting some vocational skills in order to open a company of my own to help those who are in the same situation as me. So far, 
whose company has provided employment for many young drug addicts, giving them the opportunity to turn over a new leaf. There are many businesses run by former drug addicts, where they are now offering former addicts a chance once they have come out of rehabilitation. People are being given the chance to learn vocational skills and earn money legally. Is an example that should be multiplied. Over recent years, Ho Chi Minh City's authorities have provided favorable conditions to help more than 7,000 people find jobs and successfully reintegrate into the community. The reality is that former addicts with vocational skills and steady jobs that provide good regular incomes are far less likely to return to their previous ways. Now, over 100 disadvantaged children from Ho Chi Minh City got the chance to voice their opinions and wishes at a forum held in the city on June the 26th. The children talked about the lack of playgrounds in the city, the difficulties that disadvantaged children face in assessing entertaining activities, and the need to renovate the school syllabus and add more life skills classes. The forum aims to raise public awareness about children's right to participate in policy making that affects them directly, especially for those of disadvantaged backgrounds. Ho Chi Minh City is now home to 1.4 million children, of which 15,000 are disadvantaged. Now, to preserve the cultural identity of ethnic groups and to raise the awareness of green development in Vietnam, a class-themed recycle redesign was organized by Ti Toi Atelier, an art center in Hanoi. The class has attracted many young children to participate. Not many people wear this design now. However, it is the source of inspiration for these small children, aged 5 to 15, to design new clothes under the instruction of art teachers from Sweden. And you, and you, and you. And they dress quite similar to some of the minority people in Vietnam. And then switching from Vietnam, Swedish minority people to Vietnamese minority people and give some inspiration for the kids when they later on today will start working with the t-shirt cutting and mixing and making new patterns and so to art, I want to teach my students lessons about green living and sustainability development. I want them to know that if we keep using our natural resources unwisely, we will run out of them in 10 to 20 years. Young participants were asked to think about where they want to live in the future. They designed clothes based on the weather and the characteristics of the area. The Thuy Atelier was established in June 2013 to create an art space for small Vietnamese children. The center hopes to help students develop their love for art and nurture their curiosity to learn about different phenomena around the world. Now known to some as the martial art of love, Aikido is a purely defensive practice that originates from Japan. A Canadian sensei with 40 years of experience, Mark Kitts has spot the passion for a particular discipline of Aikido here in Vietnam, one that focuses much more on the concept of ki. Let's find out what exactly that is in our Culture Watch this week with our reporter Thuy Zoom. The martial art of Aikido began in the late 1920s. I, harmony, Ki, energy, and Do, the way of. A defensive discipline defined as harmonizing life energy. Aikido is performed as a way to blend with one's surrounding and the motion of one's attacker, redirecting force rather than opposing it head on. I imagine my life like a river. Yeah. 
So I jump into the river and you flow with the river. And as long as you don't turn, when you try to turn right or left and you start fighting the river, then things go wrong, right? But if you follow it, yeah, and you flow along with it, the universe will always take you someplace. Meet Mark Keats, a sensei who has lived in Vietnam for the past 11 years and who has practiced Aikido since the age of 14. It was then that he traveled to Japan and studied under Koichi Tohei, the founder of the Aikido line, Shinshin Futsu, or better known as Ki Aikido. The traditional style of Aikido, they tend to teach you technique, yes, without using your mind. But Toy Sensei felt that was not what Old Sensei was wanted to teach people, yes, so he wanted to uh, teach people first, mind leads body in everything you do, yes, yes. so your work, your your family life, everything you have to put your mind or your spirit into your into your life, and this is the basic foundation for uh, Shin Shin Tutsu Aikido. But what exactly is key? Life energy, spirit, feelings, an emotional state of mind. As Mark says, once the key or state of mind is fully invested or at ease, actions will then follow effectively. Mark brought his passion of Ki Aikido to Vietnam, and the Hanoi Shinshin Toisu Aikido Club was formed back in 2006. We're now here at the gym of the Lake Widon Secondary School, and behind me is Mark's class, which takes place weekly, and it's been going on for the past six to seven years. Here, the students learn about the principles of what Ki is and how to apply that to the movements in Aikido. But it isn't exactly as simple as it sounds. What is apparent from the practice routines is that Ki Aikido puts little to no emphasis on force. Mark stresses that it is a relaxed state of mind and not intentional gathering of force that will keep your body in balance. Kao here is an eight-year practitioner and now instructor. I think this is a very real type of martial art. The more I practice it, the healthier I feel, the more I feel connected with people around me. I think this is a martial art that brings people together, rather than focus on combat. What we practice our martial art for is to learn to stay relaxed, stay positive, have a good and friendly relations with the people and the world around us, and uh, have a positive attitude towards life. If you learn that, then you can apply that not only in a martial art, but every day. And then it becomes very worthwhile to practice. In his lifelong career of training Ki Aikido, Mark says he has actually only used the martial art in real life twice. Yet the principles of mind training have proved invaluable to shape the person that he has become. Ki is the most important thing in my, in my life, in my uh, work. How to how to work with your family? Yeah, so I think uh, key principles actually very well do very well in Vietnam. That's what I want the students to when they leave the door. Yeah, is not to think about throwing at somebody, but how to how to get along with the people they're living with. Yeah, how to improve their life so they can achieve their goals. Yeah, and to have a better life. That's all. Yeah. Unlike other forms of martial arts and even the traditional line of Aikido, Shinshin Toisu Aikido goes beyond defensive moves or fighting techniques. For Keith Sensei, it is not just a martial art, but a way of life. Tuizum, Vietnam Television, Hanoi. And now it's time to check out our weather updates.
And that's all we have for now. In the meantime, do log on to vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go for my news and updates. For now, goodbye from Hanoi.